Welcome back to another class of Gimor's journey with Rashi. We are continuing with Masech Berachot and Dav Gimel Amud Aleph. This will be part one of the Shur, the first line inside the Gimor. Kasher the Rabbi Meir at the Rabbi Meir. Now, before we continue, let me just explain the word Kasher. Kasher could literally mean two things. Kasher can mean a difficulty, which I can read it like that also. That there's a difficulty posed by one teaching of Rabbi Meir against another teaching of Rabbi Meir. But another way you can understand the word kasha is contradictory. It's a contradiction. One teaching of Rabbi Meir contradicts another teaching of Rabbi Meir. Now if you look into the Gemara where it says kasha the Rabbi Meir at the, at the Rabbi Meir. What does it mean ah? Like literally ah, right? If you look into, if you look uh, how to translate this into the Hebrew language, ah over here will mean Al, which an, which means an. So basically, when you're gonna learn it, you're gonna say Kashi the Rabbi Meir, Ad the Rabbi Meir. So I would read it Kashi the Rabbi Meir, Al Rabbi Meir. So it makes it easy again, just whichever way you want to learn it. But I'm just trying to put it into uh, Lashon Kodesh. Why, when you understand it in Hebrew language, it becomes much easier. So the Gemara is saying over here that there is a contradiction between Rabbi Meir in one of the Berites that he taught. And between Rabbi Meir and another Brayta that he taught, we look into Rashi as usual. The first Rashi inside the Gemara, Kashi the Rabbi Meir and the Rabbi Meir. There is a difficulty with the Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Meir himself. Leel Amar because above in Dav Bet Amur Aleph, no Dav Bet Amur Bet. I apologize. He said on top. From when does one recite the Krishna in the evening? Mishaash b'nei Adam nichnesim lechol pitan be'arvei Shabbatot. From the time when the when a person enters to eat his bread meal on Friday night, and Rashi says that shiur you should know shiur muhar kohen. That shiur is later than when the kohen enters to eat his truma. The hacha amar mishaat tefila. But if you pay attention towards the end of the gemara, meaning three quarters down into the gemara, Rabbi Meir said he gave us another time when you have to recite the kriyat shema. Where he says Mishat from when the Kohen dips into the Mikvah, that's the time you have to recite the Kriya Shema. Shehi Kodum Ben Ashmashot, which is before Ben Ashmashot, because that's when he goes to the Mikvah, it's before Ben Ashmashot. So we see here clearly, Rabbotai, you have two separate opinions in Rabbi Meir. One teaching of Rabbi Meir says, when does one recite the Kriya Shema in the evening? That's when a regular person enters to eat the Friday night meal. Which is later than the time when a Kohen goes and eats his truma. So let's say it's over here. But then another teaching of Rabbi Meir says, When does one recite the Krishna in the evening? Oh, that's at the time of Tvila, which is before sunset. Right? Because he has to go before Ben Ashmashot, he has to go a little bit right before then. So I don't care how you want to look, if you want to look, it's nine minutes, if you want to look, it's Kerem Ain, it doesn't matter. But Rashi is telling you very nice Chiddush, Rashi is telling you, that the time when a person enters to uh, eat his bread meal on Friday night is later than when the coin would eat the truma. So automatically, when now when Rabbi Meir tells me that even if you want to look like Rabbi Yosef, that, that's the time when you're ready allowed to say Shema, and that's when they're allowed to eat the uh, truma, not a problem, not a big deal. But still, that time is before the time when people enter to eat their bread meal on Friday night. So it seems over here, it doesn't seem, it is. It, 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 Rabotai, it's a clear contradiction. How can Rabbi Meir tell me in one case, you have to basically, let, let's make it time-wise. Let's make it time-wise. Let's just, argument's sake. Let's say like this. When does one begin the Krishna in the evening? We're going to ask Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir is Rabbi going to tell you when a person enters to eat his Friday night bread meal, which is at 6.15, let's just say. And then what about, we ask Rabbi Meir again, when do you have to read inside the Krishna in the evening? You know what he's going to tell you? When the people dip. Well, I mean, when the Kohanim go and they dip into the mikvah. Which is Rabotai, let's say, let's say for argument's sake, 611, 610, doesn't matter. It could be even 613. But the novelty over here is, there are two contradictory opinions. How can Rabbi Meir be teaching me two different halakhas? Uh, Opposing halachot, and it's Rabbi Meir himself. So one more time, Rabbi Tadarashi. One more time. 
Kashi the Rabbi Meir, the Rabbi Meir, it's a difficulty. It's a contradiction of one teaching of Rabbi Meir against another teaching of Rabbi Meir. Why? Le'el amar mishash b'nei adam nechitzi l'chobitam be'arei shabbatot. On top, in top bed, amud bed, he said, which was the second b'rite that we saw. Over there he said, when does one begin to recite the Christian in the evening? From the time when people enter to eat their bread meal on Friday night. Ve'ushur mechar mishat kohen, and that is the later time from when the kohen enters, his, enters to eat his trumah. Ve'hachabar over here, and also in Tabet Amit Bet, which was the third writer, Amar Mishat Vila. He said, From when does one recite the Krishna in the evening? From when the coin enters to dip into the mikvah. She called him Ben Special, which is before twilight. So, how is Rabbi Mary teaching me two conflicting halachot? So, back into the Gemara. The Gemara answers, Not a difficulty. Why? Trey Tanae Aliba the Rabbi Mary. Whenever you see this language of Tanae, you should automatically know in your mind. That it's a machloket. So you're going to learn like this. Terei Tanae is two Tanaim, Aliba the Rabbi Meir. That you had two Tanaim that they were arguing against one another according to the opinion of Rabbi Meir. That means you had one Tana that was learning Rabbi Meir. He said that when people enter to eat their bread on Friday night, that's the time you have to go ahead and recite the Kriya Shema. Another Tana is going to say, no, Rabbi Meir was really holding when the Kohanim dip. So really, it's not Rabbi Meir himself saying that teaching. It's two Tanaim and how they understood Rabbi Meir, how he taught it. One Tana understood Rabbi Meir when a person enters to eat the bread meal on Friday night. Another Tana taught it that when the person enters, when the Kohen enters to dip into the mikvah. So really, it's not Rabbi Meir against Rabbi Meir, it's two Tanaim. So you have two Tanaim understanding Rabbi Meir completely different. That is not a problem. It's like telling me, you know, Chacham Avadi holds one opinion, and the Ben Ishkai holds one opinion. Fine, but if we're not telling you that, you know, in that one opinion, that rabbi is arguing against himself. So that's why, this is very important, Surah Botai. Trei Tanei Aliba the Rabbi Meir. It's two Tanaim, and how do they learn the opinion of Rabbi Meir? So they, were, they are arguing, and how to understand Rabbi Meir. So one more time, Rabbi Botai. the Rabbi Meir, it's a contradiction. One teaching of Rabbi Meir against another teaching of Rabbi Meir. The Gimor says, no, Terei Tanei is two Tanaim, Aliba the Rabbi Meir, according to how they understood Rabbi Meir. So really the Tanaim are arguing, not Rabbi Meir is arguing. Beautiful, let's continue the next piece. Kasha the Rabbi Eliezer, the Rabbi Eliezer. Same thing, Rabotai. We have a contradiction of one teaching that Rabbi Eliezer taught against another teaching that Rabbi Eliezer taught. Comes the comes the Rashi, if you look into Rashi, Rashi is going to clarify, what does that mean? Where did you have that Rabbi Lezer fought against himself two times? We only actually saw one time where he fought in the, in the third right. Let me just see it. Yes. He says over here, Rabbi Lezer said, from when does one recite the Krishna in the evening? From the time once the day sanctifies on Friday night, which is when? On sunset. Divi Rabbi Lezer, those are the words of Rabbi Eliezer. But yeah, but if you look into Dav Bet Amud Bet, I don't believe there is, no, there is not another Rabbi Lezer. So why is he telling me, today? why is he telling me over here, Kashi the Rabbi Lezer, at the Rabbi Lezer? Where? There's only one Rabbi Lezer. So, you know, before we do the Rashi, I want to just show you something nice. If you look back into Dav Bet Amur Aleph, right, let's go here. If you guys remember, we said, remember, Matai Kodin Shua Be'aravin, you can see what I just did? From when does one recite the Shema in the evening? From the time when the Kohanim entered to eat the Truma. At Sova Hashemura, we showed until the end of the first watch, Divri Rabbi Eliezer. Rabotai, pay close attention. Right now we are assuming that this time the comment that said this teaching when he says, from when does one recite the Krishna in the evening, is actually Rabbi, Meir, uh, Rabbi Eliezer saying it. So now we have a problem, now we have real contradiction. How can the Rabbi Eliezer of the Mishnah and the Rabbi Eliezer in the Baraita be saying two different teachings? How can you have the Rabbi Eliezer in the Mishnah says, from when does one recite the Krishna in the evening? When the Kohen enters to eat Truma. How come in the Baraita he says, from when does one recite the Krishna in the evening? From once Shabbat sets, right? Meaning on sunset. So clearly you see, because over there when the court enters the Truma, 
It's at Tzatzikochavim. Over here, Rabotai, it's at sunset. So you have two meaning it's right before, uh, right? Well, I'm sure when, right, when Moshe Shabbat hits, which is right after sunset. So clearly you see that there's two separate opinions. So back into the Rashi now. Kashi the Rabbi Eliezer is a contradiction of one teaching of Rabbi Eliezer, the Beraita. The teaching of the Beraita of Rabbi Eliezer. Adi Rabbi Eliezer, the Matnitin. And it's a contradiction on the Rabbi Lezer of the Mishnah. Rabotai, stop right there. Let's not continue from there. Let's just stop right over there. Now let's go back into the Gemara. So let's read it like this. Kasha the Rabbi Lezer, the Rabbi Lezer. It's a contradiction of a teaching of Rabbi Lezer in one Baraita against uh, Rabbi Lezer in another Mishnah. There are two contradictory views. One, the Mishnah says from when the Kohanim enters to either Truma, the Baraita says once Shabbat comes in. So do two opposite views. The Gemara says no. Same language. Two Tanaim and how they're going to learn the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer. So three Tanaim, Alib Rabbi Eliezer. is two Tanaim according to the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer. How did they learn Rabbi Eliezer? One time is going to tell you, I learned Rabbi Eliezer from when the Konim entered to the Truma. That's the time after we said Shema. The other time is going to tell you no. The, the time of the bride is going to tell you no. Why? The way I learned Rabbi Eliezer is very simple. From when one Shabbat, once the day uh, sanctifies, meaning one Shabbat comes in, which is right after sunset. So therefore, is you have two Tarim once again. It's not Rabbi Eliezer against Rabbi Eliezer. He never said that teaching. It was two other rabbis, two other Tanaim that were able to go ahead and try to, each one was trying to understand Rabbi Eliezer according to the way he understood him. One said like this, the other one said like this. So again, we go back to that concept. It's two Tanaim arguing on each other. That's fine. But it's not a contradiction in the words of Rabbi Eliezer because he never said it himself. Now continues the Gemara. And the Gemara says, V'ibayt eim. Oh, here we go, Rabotai. This is very beautiful. And if you want, and if, and V'ibayt eim. And if you want, I will say, Rachel love Rabbi Eliezer he. The beginning of the mission really is not Rabbi Eliezer. And I'll tell you why, Rabotai. Because when you look into the Mishnah, when it says, Memotai kudin shema baravin, Mishasha kudin nechzir chobet rabotai, Atzom hashwara, Atzom hashwara, Rishon tibir rabbi lezer. One second, how do you know that this whole machloket, meaning with the rabbi lezer, the chachamim, rabbi shimon, ben gamliel, I'm sorry, rabbi gamliel, how did you know that this is maybe completely separate from the time? How do you know, rabotai, how do you, from where does it say that the time come of the Mishnah it's Rabbi Lezer. Oh, just because you connected Ad. Because remember, it says, from when does one recite the Krishna in the evening? From when the Konim enter to eat the Truma. Period. Stop right there. <clears throat> that is the beginning of the time. Ad is maybe a whole different conversation now. It's now the meaning that end of the Baraita, I mean, the end of the Mishnah, maybe they're having a different argument altogether. But really, I can tell you that the beginning of that Mishnah is not Rabbi Eliezer. So that's what he's doing over here. If you don't like my previous answer, where I told you it's two Tanaim in understanding Rabbi Eliezer, I'll give you another answer. not a big deal. If you want, I'll say like this. Reisha, the beginning teaching in the Mishnah when it says, Love Rabbi Eliezer. It's not Rabbi Eliezer. So once it's not Rabbi Eliezer, now you don't even have a question how can you have one teaching of the Bright of Rabbi Lezer go against another teaching in the Mishnah of Rabbi Lezer? That's not a problem. Why isn't that a problem? Because that over there is not Rabbi Lezer. Good job. Give me a few minutes. Please. On desk? Yes, please. Okay. Now look into Rashi. Rashi says, the fourth line in Rashi. And if you want, I'll say it like this. Rasha de Matanitin, the beginning of our Mishnah, love Rabbi Eliezer. It's not Rabbi Eliezer. But one second, but this that it taught in the Mishnah is the word Rabbi Eliezer. It says clearly over there. No. Asov Hazman Kai. It's referring to the end of the time. The Ka'amar Ad Sov Hashmora Rishonah, because Rabbi Lezer said, until the end of the first watch, Upligi Rabbanan Aleh, and the Chachamim argued on him, 
and they said until chatzot. So basically, we see from over here that really maybe the beginning of the teaching could have actually been the chacham that said. From when does one begin to recite the Christian in the evening? From the time when the corn enters through the truma. Maybe that's the chacham. How do you know there is no? You don't have a clear, solid proof that the Mishnah stand to come is Rabbi Ezer. If I don't have no solid proof, then you can't ask a question, Rabbi Ezer from the right and the Rabbi Ezer on the Mishnah. You can't do that. So never completely, there's no question, so there's no problem. But Rabotai Rashi says Rabbi like this. Now Rabbi, now Rashi continues, he's going to break down why did Rabbi Ezer learn the way he learned? Ad Som Hashmona Rishona. Why did the Chachami learn? Ad Chachot. And why did Rabbi Ezer learn? Ad Mutashachar. That's what he's going to just break down. So he says, the Rabbi Lezer Darish Bishabacha, Rabbi Lezer, he expounded on the verse of Ubishabacha, when you arise, Zman Hat Chalat Shechiru, that's the, the beginning time when people lie down, meaning to say, Shebenei Adam Holchim Lishka, when people go to sleep, Ze Kodem Vezem Mukhar, some of them, they proceed to go to sleep earlier, and then some of them proceed to go to sleep later. But he wants to teach you that period from when people begin to go to sleep. To the time when people late in to go to sleep, that whole period is called At Sov Ashmora Divir Rabbi Lezer. That period is called the end of the first watch. From the beginning to the end is called the first watch. Continues Rashi, and Rashi says, The Rabban and Darshi and the Chachamim, how did they expound the Pasuk of Shabucha when you lie down? Calls the Manshi, the whole time when people go to sleep. When is, what does that mean? The Hainu Kololai, that means the whole night. Eila Shastu Sayag Davar. Rather, they made a fence for that halakha, and they said you can only go up until chatzot. You can only say shema at chatzot, even though they hold ubeshabucha means people go to sleep the whole night. What about Rabbi Gamliel? What? How does he learn ubeshabucha? Oh, I'm sorry. Rabbi Gamliel also is going to learn ubeshabucha means the whole night. So why doesn't he go like the chacham and make a fence? No problem. Rashi tells you, Rabbi Gamliel let lehahu sayag. Rabbi Gamliel does not have that fence. So go ahead, he's not afraid. What the Chacham are afraid of, Rabbi Gamliel was not afraid of. Now, Rabotai, let's do this. Before I do conclude, again, this is two periods. Let's just conclude over here. And I want to just run through the Gemara without elaborating back and forth. Just to do the Gemara with you, with the Rashi, okay? Rabotai, very simple. Kasha, the Rabbi Meir, the Rabbi Meir, it's a difficulty of Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Meir. Gemara said, not a difficulty. Why? Tretanel, the Rabbi Meir, it's Tutanaim. In, uh, according to Rabbi Meir, understanding Rabbi Meir completely different, so it's not a problem. Kashi to Rabbi Lezer, to Rabbi Lezer, you have, it's a difficulty, it's a contradiction of one teaching Rabbi, Rabbi Lezer and another teaching Rabbi Lezer. No. Again, same answer. According to how they understood Rabbi Lezer. If you don't like my previous answer, I'll give you another answer. If you want, I'll say it like this. Raise your love, Rabbi Lezer, he the beginning of the mission is not Rabbi Lezer. If it's not Rabbi Lezer, so therefore you don't really have any question of the Rabbi Lezer in the Brayta and the Rabbi Lezer in the Mishnah. Let's just do the Rashi's. Let's run through the Rashi's without explaining it in case you want to get the definitions down. Kashi the Rabbi Meir, the Rabbi Meir. It's a contradiction of Rabbi Meir against Rabbi Meir. Le'el Amar on top, he said, Adam from the time when people enter to eat the, the, the bread on Friday night. And that time is later than that of the corn when he eats the shruma. But over here he said, from the time when a Kohen dips into the mikvah, which is before Ben Hashmashot. So we answered, it's not a difficulty. Why? Because according to the opinion of Rabbi Meir. Kashi the Rabbi Lezer the Beraita and the Rabbi Lezer the Matnitin. There's a contradiction of one teaching of Rabbi Lezer from the Beraita and another teaching of Rabbi Lezer of the Mishnah. The Ebayit Ema, and again we also answered that. We said two Tanaim in the world of Rabbi Lezer, so really it's not a contradiction. The Ebayit Ema, and if you want, I will say like this: Reisha the Matnitin love Rabbi Lezer. The beginning of our Mishnah is not Rabbi Lezer. Ah, one second, but it said clearly the Rabbi Lezer. That was the first opinion. No. This that he taught in the Mishnah. These are the words of Rabbi Lezer. It's going on the end time of reciting the Shema and not on the beginning time of starting the Shema. The Ka'amar, because like I said over there, 
until the end of the first watch, and the Chachamim argued on him, and they said, until midnight. The Rabbi Lezer, Darush Bishabacha, because Rabbi Lezer learns the positive of Bishabacha, when a person lies down, Zamanat Chalat Shechi, with the beginning time, when a person starts to lie down, when is that? He's going to try to explain the Zaman, the beginning time of lying down. Shebunei Adam Halchim Lishkav, when people go to sleep, Zekodem Vezemukhar, you have some people that go to sleep earlier, but some people, they go to sleep later. No problem. That time you should know. From the time when people begin to go to sleep until the time when people late to go to sleep, that time is called Hashmur uh, HaRishonu. That we said, Atzov Hashmur HaRishonu. From Ubishabaka, from the beginning of night until the end of the first watch, that whole period is called Atzov Hashmur HaRishonu. Continues Rashi and he says, Verabanan, what are the Chachamim going to do? Why did they argue him? Because no problem. They said, because I, I don't learn the word Ubishabaka like you do. The rabbis are going to expand on the word Ubishabaka when you lie down. That's the whole time when people are going to sleep. Which means to say the whole night. So if it's the whole night, why did the Chacham say after? Why did the rabbis say until Chatzot? Rather, they made a fence for the Halakha of Shema and they said, Ad Chatzot. Ramakam also agrees of, of Ubishabaka. That is the whole night. Because he clearly said, Ad, Adam the Shachar. But why didn't the Ram Gamil agree to the Chachamim? Very simple. Ram Gamil, let Lehahu Sayag. Ram Gamil does not hold, he doesn't have that fence to go ahead and tell the people that they have to stop at Chatot. Rabotai, have a great day. Baruch Adonai Amen. Ve Amen.